In the last video, remember we had this function Q of K L, simple Cobb Douglas production function, 2K to the 3 fourths, L to the 1 fourth, relatively simple example. And we had a point that was a regular point because the gradient did not vanish at this point. And we could construct an implicit function L of K. Uh, around this point. And that was great. And we found that the tangent line satisfied L is equal to negative 3 of 3 times K minus 50 <clears throat> plus 50 <clears throat> and of course this has a parametric equation right so also we could say that the tangent line is L of T is equal to the point on the curve plus T times 1 minus 3 this was the tangent vector that we saw last time well let's also compute the gradient at this point 50 50 right so this is the gradient of Q at that point the gradient of Q at 50 50 is equal to of course DQ DK evaluated at 50 50 DQ DL at 50 50 which when we plug in things is going to give us 3 halves times 50 to the negative 1 fourth 50 to the 1 fourth that's dq dk evaluated at 50 50 again this value we've already computed but let's continue on 50 to the negative 3 fourths and that's equal to just three halves, one half. So let's look at this. So an interesting observation is that if we take three halves, one half, which is that gradient, and we dot it with one negative three, which is the tangent, which is the tangent direction, we get three halves minus three halves which is equal to zero that is we had our gradient is perpendicular to the tangent now if we think of this in terms of symbols well this is going to be dq dk dq dl dotted with 1 comma negative DQ DK over DQ DL and ultimately if you work that out DQ times DQ DK times 1 uh, minus DQ DL divided by DQ DL will give us ultimately 0 in symbols so that makes sense it makes sense according to these symbols but why why right the the arithmetic works out right the uh, the geometry works out but why is it the case well remember uh, the gradient points in the direction of largest positive change
it points in the direction of largest positive change. But what does the tangent do? The tangent to a level curve points in the direction of no change. That is, if it tells me how to locally stay on the level curve, and the level curve is defined by keeping the function constant. No change. And these two jobs, right, the job of the gradient and the job of the tangent, then, are exactly perpendicular to each other in a metaphorical sense. And so it makes sense, then, that they are actually perpendicular in an actual geometric sense. And again, we can sum this all up in a theorem, which we've already essentially proven with that calculation. Let g be a C1 function around some point x naught, y naught, and suppose that your gradient's not zero. So that is, it's a regular point. That is, x naught, y naught is a regular point of g, where we defined regularity of a point of g last time. Then, of course, the, the tangent to the level curve is well defined, and so this, this makes sense. Then the gradient g of x naught, y naught, is perpendicular to the level set, and we'll say it's the level set. Because the level set locally looks exactly like the tangent line of g at x naught, y naught. So when we say it's perpendicular to a curve, we mean that locally, if we zoomed in, they look like they're perpendicular. And the proof is essentially obtained by working this out, and if, if one of the derivatives vanishes, of course, then we just uh, flip, flip it the other way.